Coach, what's the game status for Saturday? It's a wait and see if we can do anything to get a couple of emergency snaps out of it. You know, it's it's uh, he's not ruled out, but it's going to be just a, an emergency thing where we might have to use a few plays or won't have him at all. You guys decided on a definite, I guess, starting defensive line, maybe Melvin moving inside or is out or going to be? Well, we're working different packages, you know, personnel packages, but the, the actual starting line is, you know, it's the same ones we've had in there. It's, it's uh, De uh, Devin and then Clowney, I mean, Devin and then Melvin and then Trevian and then Al Alfred. But we may start the game with the other package, just on that. But uh, they're all going to be playing a lot and mixing in. Just this last day of practice, Ellis, I mean, how is the, the mood of the team? Is everybody pretty hyped up, excited to go? Yeah, practice has been good. And I think the players, that, you know, you always have these drags in camp. You get tired of practicing against each other. You know, I, I know people get tired of me hearing this. We're the only level of football that you can't go scream at somebody. Pros can do it. High schools can do it. And I guess, you know, the Pop Warners can do it if they like to. But you have to sit there and grind on yourself. You see the same routes. You see the same blocking schemes. They know what we're calling over there, so they scheme it up. We know what they're calling over there, so our players start jumping things. It, it really gets to be an absolute grind. And uh, they just, you know, that's why I think when they get to game time, you know, it's almost like a, you know, letting that pressure button off and cutting them loose. Because this uh, ECU offense does things a little different with the short passes and the screens, do you have to adjust your scheme, I mean, pretty heavily? Well, I don't think we have to adjust our scheme, but I, it's just not a, it's not a, a scheme that you blitz to get to the quarterback. Everybody says we, they throw 60-something times a game. Well, we got to blitz him. we got to get to that quarterback. Most of the time, when you're going this way, the ball's going that way. You know, his average time, the ball's in his hands in their offense is two seconds at most. Uh, he's got the times where he drops back. They keep the back in. They have to throw it downfield. But it's very hard to predict when you're going to catch him in. So if you blitz five or six, and you happen to have a little quick screen on, they got a good play. You better be perfect or you're going to have a hard time you know, getting them on the ground. But they do a good job of mixing it. And, and that ball's out of his hands so quickly. Uh, they make you they make you blitz real choicey. You know, you have to be kind of kind of picky when you bring the heat. Does you put more pressure on the linebackers or the corners to watch out for those guys' play? Everybody. It, you know, they've got quick screens on the edge. They've got really well-executed back slip screens. Uh, they throw what everybody calls tunnel screens with the wideouts coming back under. They spread it around, and that's why when you look at them, you, you may at the end of your game, you say, well, heck, we didn't get any tunnel screens, but you have to play and prepare for it because you've seen them on film. So I'm sure they'll have a different flavor for us, but we just don't know what it is. How's the situation of backup safety? Have y'all kind of been able to figure that out at this point? Or? No, any of y'all got any eligibility? <laughs> <laughs> we got four right now that, that have had pretty good camp. The rest of them are sort of chasing themselves around. We've got two really good players in, in Akeem and Hampton that can't play. And, and the rest of them have been very inconsistent. So, you know, we'll have to hope we don't have any bad luck. And throw it up and go. When are you going to find something out on a key when you expect to Well, we know. We know. The doctor has said there's no, no major damage in there. If the thing feels like he can do anything on it tomorrow, you know, you can strap it up and get a few plays out of him. But it is painful and to the point that it may not be weak. But when he tries to push off of it, that pain is going to force him not to have it. The quickness, you know, technique. So it can't get worse playing on it? No, but it can irritate it. It can't damage it, but the pain can get worse. Because of all the time Sheldon Royster's missed, is he a definite red shirt at this moment, or is he even available for the first game? That you well, I, I would think so. Sheldon missed so much practice time. It, it wasn't his shoulder. He missed a lot of practice time with his blood sugar, and, and uh, he, he didn't have enough time to practice and learn what we were doing. Uh, a few times out there, he had a little flash of, of uh, Something you know you'd be real excited about, but for the most part, he was really out there kind of confused. When you get Devontae back next week, is he definitely still at Spurs? Is that got to be something now you start to look at safety if some of these things aren't changed? Well, I was asked that earlier. I mean, if one person gets hurt in the back, I, you know, I, I'm being facetious, I had nobody on the team was really about to play him safety. Uh, we wouldn't look at Kenny Miles over there if we didn't have problems. But uh, right now, there's no answer. And I, you know, I don't want to move him back there. I think he's a better player at Spur. He's had a really good camp at Spur. Uh, if he's the only guy we got, we'll put him back there. You know, I hope he's not. What has Kadichik's Marcus uh, progress been like back there? He's done well. and He was one of the young guys that, that from the very first day or two or three, I kept bringing him up to the secondary coaches. I said, when I see the guy, he's got a little fast twitch about him. He's doing some things and making some plays on the ball. At that time, it was at corner. So we moved him and gave him a chance to compete with that Spur position where you know, we're going to have a problem at first game. 
And frankly, I think it, it, it got him confused. I think he's, it set him back a little bit mentally. So then when we realized what a bad problem we had in deep safety, we put him back there to see if he could compete for that. He, he's gaining some ground. He really is. He's come a long way this week, actually, even with the game plan. But he's just making too many mistakes, and he's too confused right now. I, I don't feel like we'd be comfortable if he had to play in the game yet. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed that in you know, weeks, days, hopefully sooner rather than later, that we'll get some reps out of him. Is he the guy maybe long term that gives you a little hope, kid? Sure. I mean, there are a lot of young ones about that that we certainly don't want to you know, give up on. But when you, when you start playing game week and you're getting ready to play a team and throw it as well as EC and then hit right in your, your uh, SEC schedule with the team that we may have to go toe to toe with to have a chance to go back to Atlanta. Uh, we don't have a lot of time for learning on the job. Phil, this is the time of year where sometimes you know there's some last minute suspensions that creep up like Mississippi State had sitting out six eight guys. To your knowledge, is there going to be any of that for tomorrow or for Saturday? We've, we've had good practice at it last year. That's so what whatever comes <laughs> up. I think we'll, be, we'll we'll inject plan A, B, C, and D. I don't know of anything. Lord, we've had enough already. Anything else? How big have guys from Rock Hill and Charlotte been this program sort of turning corner lately? Well, I guess, you know, I, there have been, you know, several good players from right there that have obviously come in and made a big difference in our program. Uh, but, you know, there are guys from other places too. It's been funny. My, my, that's my recruiting area. And, and this year we've not offered a player in that exact area. And, and frankly, the juniors in that area, it's kind of. You know, I can't comment on specifics. That's against NCAA rules. But it's funny how sometimes things go in cycles. There's a bunch of great players up there in that little spot, and now all of a sudden it's, it's kind of dry.